All right, we are live, and I just have to say I cannot believe how absolutely inept I am when it comes to technology for sailing and oh, just all this stuff to try to to make it so that people can easily sort of follow an adventure or be able to stay in touch with people while I'm out on an adventure, you would think, you would think that it would be sort of easy, uh, in this day and age, you know, I, and I, I'm only going to rant on this for a little bit, but I'll, you, you head out on these adventures, you, you take off and, you know, part of the reason you do this is because you're you're trying to head off and be out on your own and uh, against the elements, whatever reason you, you feel like you're doing this. And you still have to sort of stay connected with a few people because they're worried about you and, and people don't understand why you go on these things and, and whatever, a, a myriad of reasons uh, that you have to sort of stay a little bit connected. And Back in the day, it used to be done with an HF radio, and that was that was basically all you really needed. And you could place these crazy radio calls <clears throat> from all around the world. It was a big piece of equipment. You had to learn how to use it, which I remember learning how to use one, and it was difficult, but you sort of figured it out. <sighs> and in any event, uh then you have the it's basically three things how how you can update people in your position how you can uh find your own position and then how you can figure out kind of what the weather might be doing in the next couple of days and all these things were solved a long time ago or not solved but you know there were remedies you know for for the old timey stuff it it was the HF radio was a way to be able to connect with people or you would flag down a passing ship and pass on a message and they would pass it on as well. Um, as far as the weather went, you've got your barometer, you you understand sort of what some of the clouds and things like that mean. And then, uh, you know, uh, finding your own position, that's all done with the sextant, which compared to what I go through trying to set up these these things like, oh, oh, it's the Garmin inReach. Oh, it's great. It's so, yeah, there's some tricks up their sleeve and it doesn't make it easy. And it freaking costs a lot of money to do that. Um, the plan, if you want to, if you want to be able to text as many people as you want, you want tracking and all that sort of stuff. It's like sixty five dollars or whatever a month which I is not that bad to be able to do that all over this planet. But if you want to then go in and start doing some of the other stuff and be able to have a, a link that people can click on so they can see where you're going and all the tracking and everything, essentially what that means, you, you, you have to go in and set up the website sort of thing and do all the details, which is fine. It's not a problem. I don't mind doing that. Uh, it's, it's complicated, but it's not that hard. But one of the things that, that that requires is that now this little device in my hand needs to be on 24 hours a day, which is to me, it just is absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Ah, that uh, ice cold bush light can't beat it. Absolutely ridiculous. The thought of, of having this device on and constantly having to charge it and all that sort of stuff makes zero sense absolutely zero sense and again i i understand like if that's the price you pay if you want to be tracked and to have that nice technology and that uh that stuff is is pretty good but the main culprit of my frustration oh let me just oh gotta go over here and get it this little bastard right here it's called an iridium go and holy cow was that quite an adventure trying to set that sucker up? Um, you know, I'd seen and tracked plenty of boats on their voyages, and they use the Iridium Go 
combined essentially with a package with predict wind and it's a very cool interface and they give you this link and you can do these little updates and it sort of you know it looks really cool and granted i it seems to work really well and all that sort of stuff until you start reading some of the fine print uh where essentially you need to pay for the iridium go and then you actually if you want to have that that actual tracking page and I could be wrong on this because I am I am new to all this sort of stuff and I've just been diving into it for the last uh well for a while now but <clears throat> essentially you need to not only have a SIM card for the Iridium Go which I knew you had to have anyway cuz it's essentially like a sat phone but it's more like a sat phone Wi-Fi thing you actually need to buy one of the Predict Wind sat phone SIM cards and then you actually have to pay for the airtime on that but also you have to pay for a massive subscription on predict wind to be able to then get that tracking thing and all that is understood you know i'm not mad about that they're providing this great service it is pretty unbelievable to to have all that sort of stuff but once again this little thing, if you want to have that map tracking and everything like that, this has to be on all the time. And that just boggles my mind that that, that thing is going to sit there and ping. Like the, I'm watching this video uh, on YouTube about setting it all up and everything. And this lady sort of is explaining it. And she's doing a really good job because it's a very complicated process. They recommend that if you're going to use this system, Give yourself at least two weeks, two weeks. I mean, work, work hours, that's 80 hours. Give yourself 80 hours to figure it all out. And then you should be good to go. And I'm thinking to myself, 80 hours, 80 hours. Like, isn't technology supposed to be like, oh, isn't the point of it to make life a little bit easier? Isn't that? I, I don't know. I don't know. But in any event, I can't imagine turning that thing on and, and leaving it on. Uh, that's, that's how electronic equipment out at sea breaks is that you're, you're just like leaving it on. Like you were just sitting in your house. Uh, so I have had to negotiate and wiggle around and worm my way all through all this other stuff trying to figure out a way that I can, one, be able to just allow people who are interested in this voyage to be able to see my position and see a daily update every day. You know, eight in the morning, they're having their coffee. They just, oh, let's see where Jerome is. See it on a map. I don't care if you could see the whole track. It doesn't matter to me. That's not a, a, a big deal. It'd be nice. Uh, but it's not going to be, you know, to the tune of 300 something dollars or $250 every three months uh, or $500 for a yearly subscription uh, on top of all the minutes. Uh, no, but it's uh, man, I'm, I'm like lost in the weeds because my brain is hurt <laughs> from trying to deal with all of this. Um no, it's just the, the fact that you, you got to sit there and, and then that's just like another power draw. So essentially what I've done through through all this this frustration is I'm foregoing. I, I figured, OK, well, what what are my absolute necessities? What are my needs? What I got the Iridium Go for was that my normal sat phone that I use uh, is essentially just doesn't work with modern computer like like windows 11 and all that sort of stuff it just cannot uh make the leap uh into modern technology as far as downloading the grid files and all that stuff and again maybe i could be just uh screwing all this up um i don't know if uh i don't know uh I don't know if if it's just basically I'm I'm just so inept in in getting all this stuff together that uh, it's just I I'm doing I'm making all the wrong moves maybe 
Uh, but in any event, I, I went with the Iridium Go so that I could get downloads of the weather files offshore. And I was able to find a another app. And I've already tested it, so I know it works, which is really cool. Uh, but essentially, it's just giving me the grib files. And it is, I'm just trying to say, let's see, figure we get the information out there. It's actually called Luck Grib, which is the worst name I've ever heard. I mean, I thought it was just a joke. Um, ridiculous. Uh, but it actually works really well. And I think it costs like 17 or $29. And then you own the app and then boom, you, you get it. You don't even have to, uh, um, go, I, you know, maybe on 24 hours a day, wouldn't you need the Iridium, Iridium or reach to be on 24 hours a day to use it though? Kind of makes sense to me, but maybe I missed some. Well, it's, it's one of those things where if I want to do a daily update in the morning, so say to my mom, I want to, I want to, you know, post a quick message so she she can you know get on with her day um all i have to do i should be able to do is just take the inreach turn it on connect it with my phone send a quick message yep everything's all good had a long night da 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 and uh all is well and it's beautiful out now send that off and then we're good to go and then i can shut that thing off and I can put it in a safe place and I don't have to turn it on until the next day. Same with the sat phone. A sat phone isn't so that you can receive calls from people. So you wouldn't have it on sitting, you know, in the boat with all these electronics. I have a Pelican case, like a big one, all the electronics, the computer, everything goes in there and it stays in its little safe zone. And it stays there all the time unless I'm actually going to use it. Because, again, you have to remember this little boat that I'm in, uh, there's going to be a lot of times where it's wet and it's rainy or there's salt water coming in or the boat's moving. You know, it might be going up and down 15 feet. And so it's not like a safe place to just leave things out. I mean, I, I've taken waves that have sprayed through uh, in between the hatches and stuff. And it's like a pressure washer being sprayed inside of here. And so, you know, you can't, all these electronics have to be really sort of tucked away. And a big thing with all these satellite things is that they have to be uh, typically out into, in the cockpit. They have to be open air. So they have to, you know, be able to see all the satellites and stuff. And if you, if I were to leave and mount that Garmin inReach up in that cockpit and go out to sea for months and months and months, I can almost guarantee it would not last for all that long. Um, and I'm sure there's probably plenty of sailors that, that have done that. <clears throat> and I, you can for another couple hundred dollars buy uh, an antenna sort of thing. But, oh, geez, waste. It's like you're looking at all these these costs just start boom, 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 escalating. And I, I don't know. I <laughs> It's fascinating to me. <laughs> but in any event, it has been a win. It has been a win. So far, I have been able to, using between the Garmin inReach, which I, I can pay basically a, a, I think it's about $34 per month, and then I can send a certain amount of text messages, which as long as I have 30 per month, I'm good. I can do the update on you know, Twitter or whatever. Um, but, and that'll give like a position report so that people can go to that and be like, oh, okay, well that's where he is and that's what's going on. So that's all I want for that. So, but the, the Iridium go, and then the nice part is the Iridium goes messaging system and the email system is terrible. Like it's, it's crazy old school. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's, it's what, I don't know. Again, it just doesn't seem like when I did the tests, I had actually, I sent a text message to myself through the Iridium Go and it arrived there and then I texted back and I didn't get anything. But then days later, I opened it back up and then it finally did come through. So the idea of being able to quickly just text people back and forth, I don't think that's going to work. But that's okay because the Iridium Go's major sort of uh, purpose in life 
or AI life or whatever you want to call it is that it can allow me to download the weather. So through luck grib, again, just terrible name. Uh, I'm able to download the grib files. It seems to work really well. I mean, grib files are grib files. It doesn't really matter. You can, when I say grib files, all that really means is that I'm getting a weather chart that I can discern what the weather is doing in a given area. It seems to download pretty quickly, so it won't eat through the minutes. And um, that's all I need it for. And then I can essentially go and take that Iridium Go, turn it on, download the weather every four days or something like that, turn it off, stow it in its safe place, and then we're we're good and, uh, and moving on. Because essentially... One of the big fears that I have, uh, or not fears, but one of the big things that I don't like about all this technology on the boat is that it has a tendency to draw attention away from the world around you that you are so adamant in escape, or not escaping, but uh, immersing yourself in. And I go out to sea, I want to go out to sea and be in this beautiful arena of sky and ocean and wind and waves and whales and whatever else and this boat and work with all of that and and that's what i want to be doing i don't want uh, more than anything the devil (laughs) i don't want the devil i don't want to have to look at the devil for more than uh a couple of a couple of minutes each day um oh i really don't like cell phones i uh This phone actually is, you know, you could call it a cell phone, but it pretty much primarily is what I would call a boat phone because it never leaves this boat. I really don't take it anywhere with me. And uh, there's good reason for that. I just, I went out and had a wonderful dinner this evening with a good friend and uh, we had this amazing conversation all over the place from sailing to, to, you know, modern stuff and, and what's going on in the world today and all this sort of stuff. And Holy smokes. Uh, you know, I took a couple of glances around and yeah, you, you definitely see it. You see lots of, lots of people sitting together and they're both staring at separate phones and all that sort of, I, you know, I need a break from it. I mean, with all the YouTube stuff and the, and the podcast and everything, you definitely have to uh, focus and it, you know, I hope, I hope I'm not offending anybody who's uh, possibly watching this on, on their phone or whatever. Um, uh, but uh, I don't know. It's it's like a paradox. <laughs> it's like, but in any event, uh, that's my rant and rave on the old technology. Uh, I'll I'll wrap it up by saying yes, I was able to at least send send texts and emails and download the weather through the Iridium Go. So the weather is key. The other two are going to be what I would call backups. The Garmin InReach. That one is just going to be for updating the position doing a daily position report through twitter and uh i'll i'll put links and stuff like that on my final video before i take off because i could be out for a couple of months i don't know um so it all in all it seems like i did it all right and uh i did it without having to pay exorbitant amounts of money um uh yeah sorry i know i know the whole phone thing um exorbitant amounts of money to, to be able to share things. And, uh, you know, I just, I just don't have enough time to be able to set up all the things that, that need to be set up. There's, there's just so many hours in the day that I can work to make money, to pay for the trip and then, uh, do all the other things that need to be done to prepare the trip. But updates as far as the boat goes, Hey, 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 let's get positive. Uh, right now I'm up in Maine and, uh, it did look like Wednesday was going to be the launch day, but the weather has taken a turn and there's two concerns. One, the weather comes out of the North on Wednesday, which is great. Cause I want to go to the Southeast and the first sort of waypoint that I'll be heading towards is the Azores a couple thousand, around 1800 miles away out in the middle of the Atlantic figure out where I go from there. But to get out there, it's, you know, tumultuous sea. You've got the Gulf of Maine and then you've got uh, the dangers of George's Bank. We go from there. But 
in any event, it's going to, uh, uh, I'm losing my train of thought. My brain is so scrambled. Uh, the weather, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to switch over and start coming out of the east, but possibly some other weather is going to be coming up from the south. It looks pretty ugly, and it may turn into something. Now, whenever the forecast is more than three or four days in the future, I can't really ever really trust it. You have to uh, – there's a huge amount of error that comes into that. So I don't worry, worry too, too much about it. Um, but it did look like Wednesday, but it doesn't look like Wednesday. Maybe it'll be Friday, maybe Saturday, Sunday. Uh, the boat hopefully will be ready. But to be honest, you know, it's going to be kind of nice if I can, if I can work Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, get three full more days in. That's a whole lot more food. Uh, that's a better stocked bar. Uh, and, you know, I there there aren't a whole lot of other things I need besides it seems like food and alcohol. <laughs> At this point, uh, I am trying to get the fuel tanks cleaned out, but uh, I'm having trouble getting hold of anybody to do that one. That one costs a little bit of money as well. But And I, I don't mean to keep sort of harping on money, but when you do these adventures, it really is one of those... Uh, necessary evils and when you do them like i do without sponsors and stuff like that not like i have sponsors knocking down my door um it's uh yeah it's real crucial because you you know once as soon as you leave then that's that's pretty much it so uh yeah that's <laughs> that's sort of my quandary but updates as far as the boat goes the mast is back on. The boom is on. Um, been able to sort through almost everything. We're, we're looking pretty clean, getting organized more and more on the boat. Main sail should go on tomorrow. I'm meeting up with uh, 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 a big fan of the, the first trip and all that sort of stuff tomorrow. Guy driving down from Canada, which is pretty awesome. Um, and show them the boat and all that sort of stuff. And, and, uh, and then, yeah, basically get to work the bottom. I got to paint the bottom of the boat, which is always a bit of a chore, but that's not a big deal. looks like the weather's going to be decent for the next few days. We get one day of rain. Um, but I think we're getting closer and closer to being ready, uh, to set sail. And I am at some points I'm getting sort of the, the jitters and, the the excitement sort of flowing through me where it's like, ah, and I, you know, I, I've been looking through some of the old videos and things like that. And that that's always kind of funny because there's some that are really, really good. And of those perfect days where it's nice and the weather is just absolutely perfect and I'm having a good time. And then you'll skip through a couple and it's some miserable squall or it's some calm where, boat's not moving at all and i'm just floating there and i'm obviously pretty miserable and everything but so i you know i i, I get to feel both because it's it's always an up and a down it's always uh an emotional roller coaster out there but uh i i definitely feel like at this juncture i am in desperate need of low level input and slow pace of life and all that for a good little while. Um, I'm, I am really, really looking forward to it. It's been amazing to be up here in Maine working for this boatyard for, from basically the start of the launch season all the way to the end. We pulled quite possibly the last boat out on Friday. Uh, we're going to pull the last of the docks out tomorrow or Monday, and there might be a few little straggler boats here and there, but for lack of a better word, we are full, and it's feeling pretty good. Uh, my buddy Dave has a great saying, but I, I it's inappropriate, but it's basically, uh, F you, we're full. Customer service right there. <laughs> oh, man, and we've had just a great team of people. Um, you know, it seems like Interestingly enough, the each day we've worked together, it seems like it's gotten more and more fun, uh, which is fantastic. You know, how, how can you beat that when you're going into work where you know that you guys are just going to yuck it up? You're going to get the job done and uh, do it well. 
and also enjoy it and joke around and have fun. And, uh, and I'll tell you, uh, years ago when I worked here, I never would have ever dreamt that that was possible. Um, but it, it has happened. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where when you get that situation, you definitely don't want to take it for granted. You want to make sure that you're savoring that flavor, uh, cherishing that moment. As I always like to say, it won't always be this good, but right now it is. So let's take advantage and, uh, and yeah, just be glad I get to experience it. Cause who knows, you know, life's a funny thing. You can suddenly get thrown a whole new opportunity and, uh, something you didn't even think was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, uh, your whole life is different and you, all you ever have of, of the summers in the boatyard in Maine are memories. So I don't know if that's a lesson or, or what, but, uh, yeah, it's been a whirlwind. I feel like literally, uh, I sailed up here in mid May, got waylaid by a big nor'easter for days in in Maryland. And then finally got up here through the fog, which lasted for like a week. And, uh, and then boom, we were just straight at it, launching boat after boat after boat. And then it was like quiet. And then I left for a little bit and then boom, I come back and we're hauling boat after boat after boat. And now it's down to, uh, tying up the loose ends. Hmm. Oh, and it does feel good. It feels good to, uh, get all the, the last little things done and, and sort of go from there. But yeah, I don't know. Um, trying to think if there's any other updates i I've still got my master list here not too many things crossed quite a few off uh as as everybody will know that that's one of my favorite things to do is cross things off the list but uh if i were to just uh read a couple of these uh organize a four peak um oil change sow the last of the sales make food list you know Water bladder, uh, paint bottom, lube portholes. Ooh, that sounds a little fishy. Nah, you just have to right around these guys right here. Uh, there's like a gasket in there, and uh, you take a little petroleum jelly, yep, put it around that sucker, and uh, it makes it just a little bit more watertight, which is nice. But yeah, I mean that's a few of the things. Was able to do some shopping because my good friend Dave decided to leave me his vehicle for the weekend. So I was able to pick up some of the, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. You have to, you know, you've got this list of things you want, but you ideally, because it's typically so big, you have to kind of subdivide it into things like toiletries, um, into cleaning supplies, into food, into beverages, uh, into equipment, so, you know, it's it's a lot of runs to like, oh, I got to go to Home Depot or I've got to go to this grocery store or I've got to go to, you know, this, that and the other thing. So slowly chipping away. Um, one of the big things I still haven't been able to find is sunscreen. And I know what you're thinking. It's like sunscreen's everywhere, but got to have like specific times. It's got a pretty fair complexion here and I've got rosy cheeks. Definitely had a, a beer or two tonight, so it's not uh, it's not all from sun. But whatever sunscreen I have, I have this. I bought this big gallon jug. It's been here at work, man. It's terrible. It doesn't work at all. I'm still. I put it on like nine times a day, and I'm still sunburned. So I'm looking for this stuff called Noad 30 SPF, and uh, comes in a big jug. And it's usually not that expensive, and it seems to be the only one that really keeps me from getting burnt. And then also doesn't burn my skin when I put it on. But yeah, that's it. That's really, uh, that's all I've got. Uh, I did, or however, pick up two new Bluetooth speakers. So that brings me up to, oh no. Well, actually that's it. That's all I have is I have two Bluetooth speakers. And I'll tell you, this is an important thing. And a lot of people don't think about this. But when you're out solo sailing, especially for long periods of time, you can get so dependent on listening to not only music, but uh, podcasts and audiobooks and things like that. Because 
it's almost like you miss hearing another human's voice. And there was one trip that I was on. I think I started out with two. Uh, one was a janky old, old Bluetooth speaker and one was sort of a new one. But I remember when the, the janky one broke and I was thinking to myself, holy cow, if I lose that one too, that's it. It's going to be sort of silence, except for maybe the sound coming out of my phone, which, uh, you know, isn't very loud. But I, I thought to myself, geez, that's that's cutting too close. So I may have to try and track down one more like spare one. Um, I usually try to make sure that they're they're very well kept. Like I'll have one that's an inside one and one that I'll I'll bring out outside and stuff. And if it gets rough, I usually take them in. But I don't know. <clears throat> Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to head over to Europe. Uh, the Azores is about, about the point where you start heading down South and I am looking forward to, uh, a little bit warmer temperature this morning when I got up, uh, there was frost all over the Bimini and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's bone chillingly cold already up here in Maine. And it's nice because the minute you get uh, a good ways offshore, the temperature of the ocean is actually, uh, makes it a lot warmer than you feel here on land. But I have a small heater on the boat, but the boat it doesn't have any insulation or anything. So I'm using a sleeping bag and blankets and, uh, typically going to bed with some long johns and, uh, it's freezing. Uh, I just live in this perpetual sort of cold uh, area. And since it's a boatyard and not like a fancy marina, you know, the bathrooms and everything are not heated. So you uh, you hop out of that shower and it's like, woo, <laughs> it's chilly. <laughs> uh, so I don't know, but you do get used to it. You, you sort of get hardened up a little bit, I guess. And that's that's kind of been good. Uh, Cause you, you sort of want to, uh, when I leave here and head out to sea, like I've already got a bit of a head start. One, I don't get a lot of sleep and I'm, I'm kind of exhausted a lot just from, from work and doing all the other stuff Two, my hands are absolutely bulletproof. As far as the calluses, they feel like I've been out at sea for months already um, and then three, I'm so used to the cold and also being stuck out in the rain because even when it rains, we still have to work. If anybody watched the, one of the latest YouTube videos that I had about, uh, putting up the mast, it was drizzling when we were doing that. And that was at 10 in the morning, but for the subsequent six hours of work, it was absolutely pouring down. We got inches. I ended my day with a gas powered bilge pump, uh, pumping out all the dinghies that were left on the dinghy dock that were almost about to founder. Um, so it was quite incredible, but again, those are sort of things that, uh, make it so that when you do head out to sea, it's not too bad. And, uh, you're pretty much ready for it. Uh, sailing Ramona. Thanks for watching. Hey, super cool. <laughs> I'll try and do uh, another one of these sometime uh, in the coming week. And who knows, you know, I may end up getting pushed back uh, a whole nother couple of days and end up having this whole week to, to get even more prepared, but we shall see. But uh, that is going to do it for me tonight because it is, uh, it's about time I hit the hay. Got another big day tomorrow trying to prep last day without, uh, without having to go into work. So. Other than that, I hope everybody has a fantastic Saturday and, uh, you know, enjoy, enjoy. If life uh, is pretty good for you right now, don't take it for granted. Enjoy it. Um, take it in and uh, give a hug to anybody around you because it's lonely out here on Old Mighty Sparrow. Oh, at least I got my boat. All right. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.